everybody, Ali Akbarian, your resident road safety expert from Mobility Engineering, back again for another Q&A. Thank you very much for tuning in to those questions and thank you very much for hitting that subscribe button down there that looks a bit like this pillow. If you haven't hit it, please do so now. We'd love to get your support to get to that thousand subscriber mark. We're almost there. I've been asking for a while, so let's get it going. Okay, so today's question is coming from our child fitting community out there, talking a little bit about the baby restraints and the child side of things. And actually it does leak into the disability restraint side of things as well. So we have had a question around fitting anchor points. So I will quickly grab a seat and show you what we mean by the anchor point. So I have a little baby seat here and the strap that comes off the top of that baby seat is called a tether strap and that needs to hook onto a point in the car called an anchor point, right? So that's what I'm referring to when I'm referring to an anchor point. Now, I have this seat here as a demonstration to show you um, kind of a real world scenario of what happens. So in a lot of cars we have um, like let's pretend that I'm in an imaginary four-wheel drive like a Toyota Land Cruiser or a Prado or even like a Kia Carnival, three rows of seats vehicle, right? So I've got your first row, passenger and driver, your second row, which is your middle row, and then that folds down to the back row and that's like these little two seats in the back row. So we're pretending this is a two-seater in the back of a van or a back of a four-wheel drive. Now, generally speaking, those very back seats don't have anchor points. So on those very back seats, you can't fit child restraints. You can't hook that top tether on. You can't fit disability restraints and so on. And so out in the field, out on the market through the fitting community and through various workshops or through the mobility engineering dealing network, you can go and see modifiers that can modify your car and introduce an anchor point. So for example, in this particular um, case, I have a device that, is a, that can, I can buy it's an approved device that's been tested before, it's got markings on it, and I can fit it to the back of this seat using the instructions that it has, and I hook my hook onto that, and that goes up there, and that becomes my anchor point. Now, the question that has been arisen around modifying and introducing those anchor points is, okay, well, someone's told me I can put an anchor point in that back seat, but what about engineering it? Do I need to certify that? What do I have to do from a paperwork point of view? And because I've heard something about if you modify your car, you've got to get engineer certificates. Is that the same for anchor points and child restraints? And the answer is yes, it is. Anything that is related to the safety systems in the vehicle, anything that affects Australian design rules and design rules are for the things like seat belts, occupant protection, emissions, all of that kind of stuff. This is occupant protection. Anything that is involved in design rules must be certified. So even if I buy this bracket, which has got a warning label on it, it's got all the approval labels on it, it's a professional product coming from a professional shop, if I fit this to a vehicle, the fitting of that on the vehicle has to be inspected by an independent engineer or an independent certifier, and that's got to be certified. Now, there, depending on the state you're in and depending on various um, you know, schemes that are going around in different states, some states have some kind of like allowances and subsidies for various common products. So this particular product, maybe in your state, you might not need certification for this particular bracket because it's a common product. So in there, that does exist. There is kind of like these type approvals around, but those are specific approvals for those specific products and those specific applications. But we're talking generalistically, if you modify a vehicle and you put in anchor points, you must get it certified. There are some allowances around that, but generally if I'm putting anchor points in, I've got to see an engineer, I've got to get that certified. So hopefully that helps with that question. Thank you very much for sending in those questions. As we say, hit that subscribe button that looks like the pillow down there, and we'll see you next time.